the longest of times, our dear European continent was under the iron grip of the aristocracy. Those who were born into the right families were destined to reign, while those who weren't were destined to be reigned over, sometimes quite literally. But obviously, the nobility had to have started somewhere, and its composition did change over time. So, clearly, it was possible for someone to become an aristocrat. But how, I hear you ask, did that happen? Well, for most of the Middle Ages, being a noble was synonymous with ruling over a fief, a particular stretch of land granted to you by the monarch. This could range from a single castle to vast territories the size of countries. You would be in charge of governing the fief, maintaining order and collecting taxes. In return, you'd have to swear allegiance to the monarch and provide military service whenever required. The most powerful nobles often owned several fiefs and had many vassals of their own. Now, assuming you weren't born into the nobility, your only option would be to receive a fief from either the monarch or one of the greater aristocrats who had enough land to give away. Monarchs, however, were often stingy with their land and would only grant it to people they were sure they could trust. Luckily for you, the Middle Ages were full of opportunities to earn royal favor. War was never more than a hair's breadth away, so the king was always in need of valiant fighters. You could help your king invade foreign lands, which he'd need to administer. And who better than you to receive these new fiefs, am I right? Or you could assist your king in putting down any of the dozen rebellions he'd be facing in any given year. Disloyal vassals make for an easy stepping stone toward nobility. Or you might participate in one of these rebellions, oh, shock horror, to help topple the king and be granted a fief by the new one. The possibilities were definitely out there if you were brave enough, but of course they inevitably ran the risk of dying a violent and brutal death in combat, as you do. Or from any random disease, even something as trivial as the common cold. <laughs> but there was a different and less risky way you could try to ascend into the aristocracy, and that was by having lots and lots of money. Many kings were in desperate need of funds and would grant titles and fiefs to anyone who could help them out. Pop a few bob in the coffers. You could lend them money, buy them gifts, finance their wars, you name it. Some monarchs, like James I, who famously established the union between Scotland and England, created an entirely new tier of aristocracy to fund their campaigns. Of course, buying a title was available only to the richest of the commoners, the emerging bourgeoisie, as it were. And assuming you could actually afford it, there was still no guarantee the king would actually give you what you wanted. The Middle Ages are rife with examples of kings taking money from the low-born classes, especially from Jewish financiers, and then just deciding not to honor their promises, be they in repaying said loans or granting fiefs. Now, as time went on, this practice of selling titles became codified and less arbitrary. This coincided with the aristocracy losing its power in favor of either the king in absolutist monarchies like France, or to the more democratic institutions like the English Parliament. In either case, both the king and the parliament had a vested interest in diluting the power of the aristocracy, and a great way of achieving that is to make it easier for non-nobles to join, and all the better if the royal coffers could expand in the process. By the time of the Industrial Revolution in England, titles of nobility were formally up for sale to an increasingly wide range of the public. Though by that point they'd also mostly been decoupled from actual land ownership. Believe it or not, the practice of selling titles peaked in the 1920s, when there were public price lists, before ultimately being made illegal due to widespread corruption. Since then, hereditary noble titles have become scarcer and scarcer, with the last new ones being awarded by the Crown during the time of Margaret Thatcher. All that said and done, there is one final way you can still ascend to the aristocracy today, and that is by becoming a landowner in Scotland through our dear friends at Established Titles. You see, Established Titles run a historical conservancy project where anyone can purchase one square foot of dedicated woodland on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland which comes with its own official certificate with a crest that entitles their owner to be referred to as Lord, Laird, or Lady. 
Your certificate features a unique plot number that tells you exactly where your plot of land is located. And for the first 200 of you, it'll be somewhere near mine in the rapidly growing Scottish Kingdom of SideQuest. Together, we can help protect the environment, and not just in Scotland, but in wooded areas throughout the world thanks to the environmental charities that established titles work with. So, consider joining our kingdom and ennobling yourself, or your loved ones, it's a great last minute gift, at establishedtitles.com forward slash sidequest. There's currently a Thanksgiving sale going on, so make sure you grab it while it lasts. Thank you for watching, my friends. It's been a pleasure, as always. We'll hear each other again, and may it be soon. So stay tuned for the next hereditarily privileged episode of SideQuest. You know... As my granddad used to say, it's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin they carry you off in. <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah.